Hi there, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have a few thoughts for you on thought forms today, which is going to be the next topic in the Mastery of Mind revised series. You've heard of the movie called A Streetcar Named Desire. Well, there's a portion of a thought form that's a little like that, but I feel it would be more aptly named an airplane named Desire because the locomotory force of a thought form is desire. Now, that's not just lust for the flesh, it's desire of any kind. It might be affection, it might be disgust, it might be anger, it might be rage, it might be desire to distance oneself from a situation. It's the strength of the desire that is the gas pedal of the airplane portion of the thought form. The strength of the desire affects the speed with which the thought form arrives at its destination and also the impact it has when it gets there. Another part of the thought form is often an image. It might be a moving image or it might be a still image. It might be in color or it might be in black and white. It might be very dense and almost physical in seeming reality or it might be very ethereal, very filmy and, and light colored, almost transparent. Then there's the ingredient sound. Uh, a moving picture or a still image might be accompanied by sound. In addition, a thought form can carry sound alone. The intensity of the emotion, the intensity of the desire that propels the thought form has a lot to do with how loud the sound so sounds on the clear audience plane when it arrives at its destination. It could be very, very loud, like a clap of thunder. It could be so loud that it shakes the walls of the room that the person is in, at, who's the receiver. Uh, it, it, very deep, dense sound, so, so much so that the walls shake or the roof shakes or the timbers crack, but that's very rare. Usually it just sounds like a sound from far away. Like in one case, for instance, a muffled gunshot might be a heads up. You'd want to steer clear of wherever that original location might be. And so, or it might be something very different. It might be, um, it might be sounds of children laughing. It might be a happy situation. So, so we have three ingredients in a thought form. One is the propulsion by desire of any kind, the propulsion mechanism. Another is the image or, and or the sound that is conveyed, whether there's a sense of movement or just a still image or simply a sound, one, one of those combinations. Right now, we're only dealing with the subconscious and conscious minds, although there are four minds. But right now, for the sake of this discussion, I think you'll find that the content either visual or auditory content of thought forms originating in the gut brain, uh, in the subconscious mind, can be decoded by studying the language of the subconscious mind in the gut brain. Uh, you'd have to go to my website, awakeningwithplanetearth.com, and search for the language of the subconscious mind or image words and there you will find how to figure out what thought forms mean when they're conveyed from someone else's subconscious mind to yours. Then there are conscious thoughts which many of the esoteric masters use. Uh, conscious thoughts are intended to teach a student to become more aware to become more conscious. And so the content will be clearly evident. It'll be very different from 
the subconscious thought forms that many people create when they're asleep, for instance. When a spiritual person is awake and conversing through telepathy, then they will say very clearly what they mean. And the conscious receiver of these telepathic thoughts will know immediately what is intended to be said. Even though it's not today's topic, I thought I would give you just a little preview of thought forms that are unconscious or superconscious, that proceed from the unconscious thought cloud of the world or else from the superconscious mind. The telepath can immediately sense what thought forms are unconscious because of their if they're images, they're very distorted images, uh, as if they were weighed down by gravity and had been created at the very center of the earth, and they'll be almost impossible to figure out. They may be accompanied by a strong sense of foreboding or taboo or some other very strong emotion. Then. The thought forms of the superconscious mind are conveyed through the very high frequencies of light, and these frequencies of light are almost impossible to see, though brightly glowing, very transparent, very, uh, very unphysical in nature, and they have the quality of being able to penetrate and and heal the human body. So because they proceed most often from our superconscious minds or from the very high uh, frequency minds of uh, beings of light or angels that can be said to have minds, the, the intention of angels transmitted as thought forms to us it has a healing capacity and, and can be felt in my case, more so than it can be seen. It can be felt as waves of healing passing through the body, for instance, or specifically targeted at, at, a, at a problem area in the body, or in the mind, or in the emotions. I realize this is rather disjointed. Please forgive me for that. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days. So long till next time.